Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, I want to explain in deep details how to draft a perfect stop for a male client. Now, um, some of us whom are yet new to my tutorials might find this a bit complex, but if you watch this over and over again, you will see that it's very interesting and very straight to the point. Now, already you must know the areas of measurement, uh, the chest, the shoulder, sleeve length, one sleeve, neckline, and of course, the top to measure them perfectly. So these areas right before you uh, start your drafting. So I have measured, although the measurements I'm taking is from my client's pictures. So you must make sure you arrange your fabric in this form. Now this folding was gotten from the client's chest over four. So the chest I have is a chest line of um, 44, right? Then plus extra two inches, that 13. So this 13 is 13 inches all through from here, all through this way, 13 inches all through to the down. So I make sure the folding covered the chest over four plus extra two inches. The two inches I added is for what they call inseam allowance. So having said that, now I will start from my right hand side for the, um, Hemming, then mark out the baseline. So this baseline I have marked out now is for my making sure that the baseline is straight enough. And then I will add four inches here. Now these four inches will serve you for your folding or hemming. After this, the next to do is to apply your customer's top length. So you extend the four inches in this form and then you apply your customer's top length. So with the top length I have, it's a top length of um, 35. Top length of 35. So you mark it in this form. Mark it twice. Make sure you mark it twice in order to have a stretched shoulder. So once you mark the top length 35 twice this way, you extend the lines properly as shown. And then after which, next thing you do now is to get your armhole. So the armhole formula we, we use is just mm -hmm. over four for short sleeves, for long sleeves and three quarter, you have to minus one from any answer you got from chest over four. So since we are making the three of them to the three quarter sleeves, we are going to divide the chest of 44 by four, which is 11, then minus one from it, which is 10. So from this shoulder line, I will mark 10 inches for my armhole. So this formula works for everybody, for both adults and kids. So you mark 10 inches here for your armhole line. Then after which you extend the line in this form. Now after the armhole line, then the next to do now is to apply the real chest, which is 44. 44 is the real chest. So you mark 44 here, 44 chests this way. And then extra two inches, but I'm using 1.5. Extra two inches or 1.5 is still very much okay. Then on the shoulder, so the shoulder of my client is 19. My client's shoulder is 19. So I will divide by two. I will have um, 9.5. Then add extra half for the sleeve joining. That's um, 10, right? Then I will mark the 10 in a slanted form this way. I will place my tape 10 inches here. I will slope it. Now, the question now is, what is the extent of my sloping from here to here? The extent of my sloping is 2.5. So, you, you imagine 2.5 in this form, this way, and then you slope 10 inches to come down this way, right? That range of 2.5 is where you're going to slope. Don't slope more than 2.5, please. Make sure you slope at the point of um, 2.5. Then you make a mark here, and then you have to also extend your 2.5 inch here. So this center point here is what you need. The shoulder line came here and 2.5 inches came here. So this is what you need. Then after which, then the next thing to do is your neckline. So the neckline I have for my customer is a normal neckline, 17 neckline, divided by six. You will have a value. Then you will mark, I'm using 2.5 inches for weeks. 2.5 inches for weeks this way. And then I'm also using um, three inches here for the depth. So add half to the width answer and get your depth. 
then you also connect in this form connect in this form so you have a line coming across this way then use your um, pattern master and place it in a way that you will get a connection coming from the neck edge to the neck depth it comes in this form right then this is how you get your perfect neck then after which connect the center point here to the neck edge now be in mind that there are other slanting methods i do that i will slant all through to the fabric unfold that was in my previous videos now that doesn't mean that that, that method is no longer um um, good to use it's still good i still use them but then i like to change some patterns from time to time but you must make sure that anyone you are using you have mastered your way around you so to know how to handle any challenges that you might face then i am sloping this through from the center point here to the neck edge so it comes out in this form right then at this point you you have to place your ruler to come in half um half inch inside you know normally in my previous videos i do i used to connect it to the chest this way and which is still the same because after this connection i will still get the middle points and come in by 1.5 which will still give us this same method i am trying to use now by coming in by half an inch inside this rule here should not be straight it should fall inside the chest by half an inch right and then using your pattern master place in this form until you get a slight curve that cut across the line that came down and then goes to the armhole depth this way right so now if you had used the other method of my video which is still going to give you the same result let us imagine it now i said that in the video that i did i used to connect in this form right to this point then from that line i will get the midpoints from here to here 7.5 the middle is 3.75 somewhere here i will come in by one and a half look at it 1.5 exact of where i still drew my line so if you use this method it's still very much okay so whichever one you do fit but in pattern making i think this method is ideal to give you a clearer view of what you are doing and less talking right and after that then connect the lines from here to come down straight this way and then from the four inches point come up by seven inches or 6.5 for your side opening then this is all you need to do for the front panel of your senator so i hope this video is clear enough to make you understand what i am teaching let me now cut it and show you the results So now, I have finished up with the panel, so the next thing to do is to cut the back. So like you all know, you have to still um, refold the front to come in this form, and then raise the back by 2.5, raise it by 2.5, by 2.5. That's something you can do in your front, then connect the line as shown in this form, then you are meant to then this will have to go backwards by half an inch this way and then the next step is uh, 1.5 for the next step standard next step 1.5 then connect it to this very form so once you have connected it to this step uh, you are done and uh, start cutting so I will cut it out now and show you the results So now in this video, I want to show us how to do our sleeve. Now I've noticed that most fashion designers do have issues on sleeve drafting. In the case whereby after cutting your sleeve, your sleeve will not be enough to go right around the body of the outfit. In some cases, it spills over. In some cases, it's shorter than the main body of the outfit. 
So the solution is here. Now, for you to get a perfect fold, bear in mind that you have to um, have a perfect translate measurement. So the translate measurement of my customer is um, 14, that's 7, right? Then plus extra 4 inches. Now, the trick to this folding is that you must make sure that the translate divided by, by 2 add extra 4. The extra 4 can with. Remember that in our cotton, we added 2 inches on the front and the back panel, it has 4 inches. So the speed should also have that allowance to be able to go right round. Now, conventionally, it states that the chest and your round sleeves are in line, meaning that whatever your chest is, your round sleeves will be enough to augment it. But when you add extra allowance, you are going to consider that the allowance you have added on the sleeve folding as well. So having done that, then I am putting a three-quarter sleeve, which we have what they call turn up at the hem. So the sleeve length I want to have is 16, the total sleeve length. Now I will decide to remove 2.5 for my turn up, right? So I will remove 2.5. Then I will add extra one inch to this in order for me to um, and have my joining properly done. So if I remove 2.5 from 16, I will have it to be at 13.5. Then plus one is 14.5. Um, the one inch I am adding is having to join to the shoulder and having to join the tunnel. That's one inch. So I have 14.5. So I am drafting 14.5. So you mark 14.5 in this form. And there you have it to be here. Then the round sleeve of my customer for the fist is, um, I think, 14 right here. Then why the other one can be 14 and a half or 15? So 14, then plus extra one inch, right? Then from the sleeve length, come down by four. This is called the inner arm. So commission test told us that the difference from your um, long sleeve outer arm and the difference from the inner arm is around three to four for men. Three to five for men. So I use four for average or the regular sizes I make. So now, to get a perfect joining, you just have to connect these four inches to the one inch here, this way, right? And then you connect this as well in this form. Now, bear in mind that they have different sleep patterns, right? They have different sleep patterns. So they have the one they call the suit hand and the one they call the shirt hand and the direct uh, connections. So I like doing the suit hand pattern or the inverted S. So how do you do it? Then measure the total distance from here to this very point. I have it to be a pattern. Now get the uh, quarter measurement. That's into four, right? Then the half length, the half measurement is 6.5. That's pattern. Then the better thing, 6.5 here by two. You have it to, to be 3.25 as well. 3.25 and also mark the same 3.25 here. So this is the quarter. That's one, two, three, four. Then the middle one, leave it this way, untouched, right? Leave it this way. Then from the first quarter, come up here by one inch or three quarter inch, this way. And then from the last panel, come down by one, this way. Then make a curve from the tip of the folder, from folded sleeve, connecting to your three quarter here, and connect to the midpoint, and then come down to the one inch, and then come back to your four inches. This is how you get a perfect connection this way. So I believe this video must have given you the points or the, the, the method where you use to draft your perfect sleeve. So by the time you join this sleeve to the outfit of your senator, it will help you to, uh, it will be enough to go right around the body and also help you to give you more fitting on the armhole without having any bulge or any protrusion. So I believe this video must have helped you now to understand how to cut your sleeves. So the next I will cut now will be my turn up measurements. So the turn up measurements will be taken from my bicep, um, elbow measurements here. That is 17. Extra one that's um, 19. So I will keep it aside and then I will come here and measure. Now remember that this fabric is on fold, right? So I will just measure um six inches that's six inches that's three six inches by the time you put into two you have three then connect the line straight this way and then since since it's on fold i will now mark my 9.5 that's 19 
this way and this serves me for my turn up for the boat sleeves so with this video now i think you should be able to understand how to cut a perfect sleeve and a perfect turn up as well thanks for watching guys hope to see you in my next and um, subsequent video